That's a very nice color on that one. Solid. I knew that was going to happen. It's a good thing I have my tetanus shot. I am bleeding a little bit. Do you need some help? But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Today we are talking about more estate sale and goodwill finds. On the table in front of me I have a variety of items that I found at two different goodwills and there are items behind me as well which I will pull out. So let's start over here with this one. This is a um, probably 1970s judging by the colors. This is a suitcase. It's actually very nice on the inside which was surprising and the zipper works. Um, it's in really good condition, so I thought I would grab this. I used to have some of these myself in some different colors, and they're just fun little bags. Then I got some pot holders. These were all in a bag together. Goodwill likes to put small stuff in a bag sometimes. So we've got the crocheted one, and then these two, um, the grapes and the strawberries. It's kind of needlepoint-ish. So, these are, I guess, trivets that you could hang on your wall. These were probably used more for a decoration than for actual use. Pretty good condition except for dust, so that's what makes me think maybe they weren't really used. Whereas um, this one here is very worn, um, has a lot of black marks on it, so this was probably actually used, and it is different on both sides, which is kind of cool. Then we've got this salt and pepper shaker set here. Now these have no corks and there's no label on the bottom, but they do seem old. There's lots of crazing. Uh, it's, it's much harder to tell on the bowling ball if there's any crazing, but it's very apparent on the yellow bowling pin. Um, you could get new corks for these, but this is just kind of a nice piece for a salt and pepper collection. We've got this teak tray with a aluminum, I'm not entirely sure, I think it's an aluminum um, plate. Now I do need to try to clean this up, it's got a lot of scratching on it and I'm not sure if that will come out, but the teak tray is in really good condition and it has a fantastic mark on the back, if you can see that. It does say Glad Mark, Burbank, California and the mark itself is a little artist paint palette so that is that in itself is really cool and um, teak is very popular so even just having the tray in good condition I think it was worth picking up and we'll see if we can get that platter restored um, if not it's just gonna be as is. this I don't know if there's a name for it um, but this is a glass bake brand baking dish and it does not have a lid with it, but the blue flowers on the sides are in very good condition. So I thought this was worth picking up. It was a little bit more than I would normally spend on something like this. Um, like I've said in other videos, the Goodwill pricing where I am is just very all over the place. Pillowcase, which I think looks pretty 70s, maybe it's late 60s, I don't know. Um, it is pastel, floral, really cute. In good condition. It's got big sunflowers on it too. Um, I've been finding a lot of random pillowcases and uh, you know you can mix and match them and they'll look really cute on a bed all together. Um, I'm a fan of blending patterns. I don't do it a ton in my decorating but I love the way that it looks. And then we've got this book here. This is actually a really cool instructional book. On perspective drawing and the illustrations are really fun just the way that the um, that everything's laid out and um, the oversized pages the cool typeface 
It's just a very interesting piece and it's actually useful if you are trying to learn perspective drawing. It's got all kinds of examples. So I think this is really fun. It has a really cool cover as well. The back and the front are the same image. So it can be a great display piece as well as a useful instructional book. All right, this guy is so big that he goes totally out of the frame. Um, this is just a print, it's not an actual painting. And let me lay him down. Uh, the frame itself is actually very nice. It's a huge frame. This is probably four inches or more wide. Really substantial. All right, so this guy caught my eye just because it's a very striking piece. The um, style of it overall, I could tell that it was mid-century. The name, I believe, is Rico Blass. It's just a really cool piece, and I didn't want to pass that up. I did debate it since it is so large. Obviously, this is not something that I can ship. It is going to have to live in my booth until someone takes it home. Now, this pair might seem somewhat familiar because they do look quite similar to the ones on the wall behind me. These are slightly darker wood and obviously a different design. Um, these are flower bouquets with a bow. It is carved out of wood and then the background is sort of a woven rattan kind of fabric. Um, these do have much more damage than the ones that I have on my wall behind me. These are a little rough around the edges and even the flowers themselves do have some damage. So they will need to be cleaned up a little bit. If I was going to fix them up, I would probably just do a little bit of Howard's Restore finish over the edges, but these are so cool and um, they're all intact as far as the backing and the um, material in the background is not coming off. There's no broken wood, it's just scuffed and dinged up. So overall condition wise, these can come back. It's much harder if there's actually a piece missing or if the back is fraying, things like that. So these are not in too bad a condition to fix up and display once again. The rest of the things I'm gonna show you today all came from one estate sale. I wasn't even going to go to this estate sale because I didn't know about it. It was posted very late in the week and I missed it. I woke up in the morning and I was looking at a different estate sale that I had been thinking of going to and saw this posting. And I thought, how did I miss this? I better get over there. And luckily, even though I was not there at the start of the sale, I did still find a lot of really good stuff. Let's start with this big item over here. This is the little touch and sew sewing machine from Singer. And it is actually a sewing machine, um, just a small version for kids. It does come with its own really nice little carrying case and there are some more accessories that go with it in its box. But let's pull the cover off. And here we have our little Singer sewing machine. It is very tiny and cute and even has a little spool of thread still threaded through it. I have not tried to test this or anything. I don't know what if it's in working order or not. This is just a fun little piece and the fact that it has the original box with it makes it even cooler. So this piece was actually stuffed up in a corner of a closet and you could barely see it except for this dandelion pattern on the edge which I thought looked cool so I pulled it down. And this is actually a men's dress shirt that is still in the package it may have been worn at some point. I have not tried to open the box. Inside, it's very dusty, but inside there is a um, sash that goes over the shirt that says, all your laundrables, Daisy Fresh, and your dry cleaning. It's hard to read, uh, but it says something about being Daisy Fresh. <laughs> your formal dress shirt, sir. It's just super cute. You could dust this up and put it out as a display piece, or you could actually take it out and wear it. I just... 
This home had a fun little built-in bar area with lots of cool shelving for drinkware and things like that. And um, I found these um, drink stir sticks. Um, these are really fun to collect if you can find, um, even if, if they're not vintage, that a lot of places will still do these just as a fun little souvenir. So I always go for these. I just grab the whole lot when I see them at sales. I have a little collection myself. They're just kind of fun to put out, especially if you're gonna do a bar display. It's fun to have a little container of these. And then this um, little carved wooden Hawaii cup, I believe was in the garage. Uh, I just grabbed it. I thought that was super cool. And I popped these swizzle sticks in here and it just looked like it was meant to be. It does have a pretty significant crack on the base, but it still has its made in Philippines sticker on the bottom. And it's just fun. This one, this is probably something that I'll keep for myself since it does have that little damage on there. I might hang on to it for a while and just do this same kind of swizzle stick thing to do a little um, tiki bar display. And this crock doesn't have a lid. It does say new co oven proof dishwasher safe. I'm not sure of the age of it since it says dishwasher safe. It's probably more recent than some of the other ones that I've been buying. It's a very nice color, has a cool pattern on it, and then the inside has sort of a speckle pattern. It does have utensil marks on the inside, but you could, since it doesn't have a lid, you could use it as something else. You could use it as a planter. Planters are very popular again right now. Um, lots of people putting air plants and succulents in anything they can find, so uh, this could be a good piece for that. Or, um, you know, just use it for yourself, for your soup. Um, sometimes when I find pieces that are a little marked up, using them for everyday wear just to have a fun looking piece, you don't feel as bad if you have any damage that you add to it if it's not in mint condition when you start out. I always pick up Fun patterns if I see them. These were buried in a drawer. This one is 1968. And this tennis outfit. Don't see a date on this one. This is the Insta Splicer. It is for splicing film together. You would use this for your 8mm, 16mm, Super 8 people still do try to do stuff with film. This is something that I would put on eBay because there are still people looking for this type of tool. These are pinking shears and they are in their original box, which is very cute. They've got the nice Singer uh, branding on them and it has the display card inside of it still. So you could use these uh, assuming that they still work, I'll have to see. Uh, but they would also be just a really nice display piece if you're doing vintage decorations in a sewing room. Well, it seems I can't go anywhere anymore without finding a wooden bowl. Here, this uh, leaf shape with the divided sections is very similar to one that I picked up recently at a different estate sale. It does have the Made in Philippines sticker on the back, but it is coming off but it is in very good condition. No wooden fruit this time though, just the bowl. As I said, planters are still very popular or popular once again, but this little pastel carousel one is very cute. I think I saw one minor chip on it when I was looking at it, but I'm not seeing where that is now. It's actually in very good condition. It does have some random stuff on the inside, which I will have to go through. Looks like notes and postage stamps. Um, but there were also some artificial flowers in here. I kept the artificial flowers in here when I bought them, just because that's how they were selling them. I didn't want to take the flowers out and stick them somewhere. I figured I might as well take them and donate them myself, rather than leave them for the estate sale company to have to clean up. These three items, I am very interested to start researching. I haven't looked them up at all yet, but we have three Disney characters with no faces. Uh, they're very strange because they have no faces. 
but also kind of cool. Um, we have Alice, Cinderella, and Snow White. Love her, and she's, you know, doing a little curtsy with her little queen wave. Um, but the bottoms of these are why I kind of jumped on it. This actually does have a label. All three of them have Walt Disney Productions stamped on the bottom along with a WD dash and then a number. 2930 and I can't tell what this one is because it got painted, partially painted over. I'm very eager to get online and do some digging as to when these are from. And if there were more in the series, I would assume, because this seems like a very strange grouping, though they all have a similar color scheme going on. Disney stuff continues to be and probably always will be a hot item, and I was pleased to see that these have the actual Walt Disney copyright on the bottom. But what are they? remains to be discovered. Hiding at the bottom of a closet, I found this magnificent poster. This is Velvet, and it is the Velvet Print brand, and the date is 1975 on this one. The edges are rough. This looks like it has been tacked up to walls so many times that the corners are just kind of disintegrating. It does have a tear up here in the top, but you cannot beat the colors on this piece. It is so cool. This is a very psychedelic poster. The velvet contrasting with these neon colors, it is just fantastic. Now, I have told my husband that anytime I bring home a secondhand haul, he is allowed to go through and say if there's anything that he wants. And as soon as I showed him this, he said that I want to keep that. <laughs> so this is actually probably going to stay in our home. We'll have to get it dusted off a little bit. Part of the problem with these velvet prints and velvet paintings and things like that is that all the lint loves to stick to that black velvet. So we do need to do a little lint brushing on this. But otherwise, this is such a fun piece. Yes, I did buy another type braider, but can you blame me? Look at how cool this is. It is just in beautiful condition in this case, which still has its key. I usually don't see keys along with the cases. And the, the color is awesome. The paint is still fantastic on it. The keys are nice and freely moving. It does have a ribbon in there, but it is probably dried out. I, I have no idea when this was last used but it is a royal typewriter. The last typewriter that I bought was also a royal, but it was a much different version than this one. Well, I ended up buying more clothing, surprisingly enough. Um, this actually, this sale had a lot of really cool clothing in it, and I first noticed that because there were several people who were just pulling out outfit after outfit and they were so excited about it and they were finding some really cool things so I waited until they were done shopping it and I went in and checked out what was left. This skirt has this wonderful bright red floral print and it's got this ruffle detail on the bottom and then it came with a matching sort of wrap crop top. It's got those little ties in the front and the tag, which strangely is upside down. The tag says Accent West California, but that is just a really cute little set. This is, none of this is something, none of this is for me. <laughs> I love this color and print and if this was something that fit me better, I would, I would definitely jump on something like this for myself. Um, I don't know much about this otherwise. And then there was this strange shaped scrap of fabric here. I don't know if originally something had a liner that was taken out or what's going on. That may explain why the tag is upside down inside of here. Maybe some, something was altered. I'm not really sure. This piece is a long velvet skirt. 
So to me, that seems very 1970s. I don't know anything about it. It doesn't appear to have a tag inside, and I can't tell for sure, but this may be a handmade piece. It's very well done. Yes, this must be a handmade piece because the hem is very uneven, but you can't tell that from the outside. It actually looks really nice. Um, but this is just a really fun print in velvet. Uh, it's got a zipper in the back. And the hook is still there. So this is, this is ready to wear. Um, just needs to be cleaned up a little bit. And you're ready for some 1970s fashion statements. How fun is this? Even the hanger matches the outfit. This fabric is thick and wooly and has a beautiful paisley pattern in bright colors along with this fun belt scarf. I'm not really sure. This is a two piece set actually. And what cracks me up about this is that this says it's a size 12. In what universe? <laughs> when you are shopping for vintage clothing, you need to remember that looking at a size of on the tag is not going to translate to our current sizes. Sizes have changed over time. Women's sizes make no sense because they're not based on actual measurements. <laughs> so um, size 12, in one brand can be different from another brand. When it comes to vintage clothing, it's not gonna line up with what you think it is either. So keep that in mind. This sleeveless top has a zipper down the back. So the whole thing unzips. How fun is that? And then we have these super cool pants with the wide legs. Let's, let me show you how wide this bottom of this, this is how wide the bottom of the pants are. So cool. And they've got a cute little pink button. Let's see if this zipper works. The zipper is pink too. I love pink. So this, I, I just appreciate the coordination of everything here. So since we do have a tag somewhere that says a size, this is not a handmade piece. Ah, here we go. Prestige by David Presson, Boston. I love having the original label in things. It really helps with being able to research. And I keep saying that I'm not really gonna do vintage clothing, especially if it doesn't fit me. And then here I am. <laughs> I just can't pass these things up. How could you blame me? This is so cool. Now I'll show you here. This is how wide the pants are at the top. This is the waist of the size 12 pants. No. <laughs> this is, uh, maybe they need to knock a number off there and even a size two, this seems very small. You just have to try things on. That's all I can say. Um, you can't do that really at estate sales. But, um, you know, when you go to a sale and the clothing is marked a dollar to five dollars, you're just going to grab it anyway. That's how I've ended up with things sometimes that don't end up fitting me, is I just see a skirt or a shirt and I take a chance on it. Sometimes you can kind of pull stuff over your clothing and see, but um, most of the time you're just going to have to take that chance. And if it doesn't fit, you can always throw it up on eBay. Now we have arrived at the Christmas portion of our haul today. My favorite category of vintage shopping is Christmas. I love vintage Christmas, specifically pastel pinks and turquoises. That's the style that I do on my tree. I can't wait to decorate my new house for Christmas. And when I saw this Christmas stuff at the estate sale recently, I just had to jump on it. First of all, we have this lovely little wooden candle holder. It came with these candles. I'll pull one out so you can see. These are just some nice little red candles that go in here. Oh, there we go. Made in Sweden. 
I got a bunch of ornaments. I almost missed them. This is why I'm gonna tell you one of my number one estate sale tips is to look in everything. Every drawer, every cabinet, every container. Unless something is marked, do not enter, do not open. You need to be looking in it. Sometimes things get missed. Sometimes things get moved around by other people who are shopping this estate sale. And you might miss out on a honey hole of vintage ornaments like I almost did. I was out on the back patio and I looked through one plastic bin that had some so-so Christmas stuff, nothing that I really thought I needed to have. I did find this oatmeal container full of Christmas ornaments, which I will pull out. But that was it. I was getting ready to walk away when I realized that under this big dead plant was another bin. So I moved the plant out of the way and opened the bin and found tons of vintage ornaments. So always check all of the places, okay? Starting with this cool little box here. These are the only ornaments I got that are not glass. Um, these are little glittered snowflakes and they are um, wire dipped in glitter. They're really fun. I will probably keep these and put them on my tree because I think they will look amazing. Um, if you've seen how I decorate for Christmas before, these will just look great on my tree. And there's only four of them. So I think that this is something that we'll just have to keep. I really love when they have this sort of uh, mica glitter on them. So this is really nice. Got the stripes and the glitter. There's one that's just wedged into here and stuck to the box and I cannot seem to get it out. I love these kind that have the um, sort of little collar on the top. This is one that I plan to keep for myself. I love the color and the motif. It says Silent Night. It is very scratched up but a lot of times with these, when they're kind of worn out, um, when the paint is chipping, there's cracking, um, there's this coloration, it actually ends up kind of looking cool. Um, also, it helps you to see that it isn't a reproduction ornament. I really like the original ones. There are a lot of reproductions out there that are nice, or companies like Shiny Bright who are still producing their same styles of ornaments today. Um, and I do have some of those to kind of round out my collection, but I love the old ones. This is a nice striped one. I just can't get this one out of here. Okay. I'm gonna have to put this one back together later, but his top is wedged in here and I just can't get it out. More stripes. That's a very nice color on that one. Solid. I knew that was gonna happen. Good thing I have my tetanus shot. Just rip the skin. All right, this one seems like it's maybe a little bit more recent. It's not one that I normally would collect, but I just took this whole container. And we have another stripy one. This one is a clear one. Those I really like the look of. Those are a little bit harder to find. And then these ones are not really much of anything. They're just a decorated styrofoam ball. Um, but like I said, I just took the whole container. Let's take a look at the rest of them. I really do like these ones that have images on them and they are a little harder to find um, that aren't too scratched up. Lots of striped and patterned ones. This is a real fun one here. We've got some that have more subtle patterns. These are a great pattern, great color, and they're a little bit bigger than some of the other ones. This one is missing the top, but I have a lot of those. I have extra ones from broken ornaments and things like that, so I will try to find a match for that because I thought the pattern on the top was really cool, so I didn't really want to leave that one behind even though it's, it, it's only missing the hook. It should be an easy fix. Here's another one that is a clear striped and it has the mica on top. 
some fun colors and patterns. This one's got a really nice scallop design. They're just so cute. This is a fantastic one. This is a really nice kind of dusty mint color. Another striped one. One of these nice indented kind. These are super cool. It's just on the one side for this one. Sometimes they'll be on both sides. That is probably the only one that I got that has that indentation. And you have to be really careful when you are looking through vintage ornaments like this because you will find broken ones. There is some broken glass in the bottom of this, but overall, not too bad. I didn't come across too many hazards digging through here. It's also very sad when you find the ones that are broken. Another of those really cool scalloped pattern. That's a cute one. Another clear stripe. And then the rest of them are all solid colors. Well, we've made it to the end of this thrift haul. Let me know down below what did you like? What didn't you like? Do you have questions about items? Do you have information about items? Did I get something wrong? Let me know. I'm always happy to learn. And stay tuned for more thrift haul videos. I will keep posting them as I am able to go out. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.